sure we are in a very exciting time in, in, uh, in engineering. And if you look at global challenges for, let's say, climate or demographic changes or mobility, uh, you really require the most profound engineering in order to solve these particular, uh, particular issues. And that's not going to be in five years or ten years, it's going to take several decades, even several generations. Electromagnetics is the driver of a lot of other physics. Um, if you've got an electromagnetic field, then you've got other problems. Ma magnetics isn't the only problem. You've got a thermal problem. You've got an NVH problem. Uh, you've got a mechanical problem, a structural problem. And where we are with SimCenter at the moment is that, that provides us a multi-physics solution. It gives us a way of coupling the electromagnetics to the structural, to the thermal, ultimately the fluids, the cooling systems, and so on. Where we can get to now is that the, we're close to, reasonably close to reality, probably almost as close as you need to get, because when you build an electrical machine, you've got to build it very cheaply. And so the production lines are fully automated, and the devices that come out at the end have a lot of variance in their performance. There's no point in predicting the performance to 0.1%, because what you manufacture has got a 5% variation or more. Oh, it's at the end. And in terms of what we can do in simulation now, 5% is relatively easy across the board in multi-physics. So we now have the capability of doing something that's pretty much virtual reality. We can, willing to spend a little bit of time, we can tell you exactly what this device is going to do to the accuracy that you need to do. So when you talk about digital twin, we have a digital twin. Let me highlight here what the uh, importance is of the accelerator portfolio in the context of electromagnetics. And uh, basically what it allows to do is that we can really shift the paradigm here. Whereas up to now, if you look at electromagnetic simulation, you essentially consider this as a point solution somewhere, let's say a floating point solution in space if you want. But what we do is we really shift the paradigm. We shift the paradigm from that point solution into a real engineering process, what our customers really appreciate. Kuhn and I talk a lot about um, energy savings and where we could go with, with what we're doing. And if you look at the numbers, and if, if you look at the amount of electrical power that's generated in the world at the moment, and say we get a one, if we get a 1% gain in efficiency at the usage end of the day, the amount of power we save per year is I think enough to power about 25 million houses. So the goal of 1% um, and more if we can get it is that we will get rid of a whole pile of power stations that we may not need. We've got to get these safe. And if you look at uh, electromagnetics, I think really today is at the core, at the heart of every major industrial trend of today. If you look at electrification, for example, Without electromagnetic engineering, you really cannot bring electrification to the level that we see today, that you want to see. You cannot go into 5G, 5G era, 5G specs, you cannot live up to that without electromagnetic engineering. And even simply speaking, if you would not have electromagnetic engineering, I think you cannot really build an electrified aircraft because it would be too heavy to fly in the first place. So it's really at the core of every major industry trend we see today in the market. It's going to be kind of exciting um, to see what's going to happen. The capabilities are there, they're coming together. It's finally becoming real. Um, the computer power is there, the systems are there, the technology is there. It's just a matter of putting it all together. It's, it's no longer dreaming in Technicolor. It's, it's getting much nearer to reality.